And we're back live in the studio here with Sean Patrick McGraw visiting us today. Brought to you by The Barn in Platteville. It looks like you've got another tune for us. I do. All right. What are you going to play? Um, it's Valentine's Day on Friday, guys. Don't forget. We're all ready. And uh, this here's my Valentine's Day song. And uh, in case my, my lovely, pretty, awesome girlfriend is out there streaming us somewhere on the internet, somewhere listening right now. <laughs> I want to get some points for when I get back off the road. <laughs> Country WGLR, and is that titled She's All Kinds of Mine? Yes. Is that the title of it? Yes, it is. So, so if I'm not going to get too personal, how'd you, <laughs> how'd you meet her? Where'd you meet her? Um, my girlfriend, uh, what, do you have like a like a corner bar in, in your neighborhood where there's like this really hot chick that, that tends bar at that corner bar? Yeah, this is a tri-state area. We've got one on every corner. <laughs> my, my girlfriend was that hot chick that worked at that corner bar years ago, and uh, we got out of touch for a while, and then... Uh, I I was available and she was available and I looked her up and uh, so you've known her for a while then it's known each other for a long time been dating been dating now for a couple of years but I've known each other for a long time yeah well, it's it's one of those things that uh, relationships are you know they could be wonderful they could be work and when you're a working musician they're, they're hard going a lot they can be very hard. difficult really, very it difficult takes, it takes a very special woman to be able to you know have that kind of patience and, and have that kind of trust and just understand it's like you know I'm, I travel a lot that's just that's my life you know I, I'd like to travel a little bit less to be able to bring her along but uh, you know doing what I do makes me happy and not doing what I do I, I don't think I'd be so much fun to be around so 
Sure. It's all good. Yeah, you know, it's one of those, I, I know lots of musician friends, my father is a musician, you yeah, know, yeah. and it's one of those that uh, when you see people kind of get away from that, that craft, I don't want to say you see it kind of start to wither, but you can tell that it just, you know, it's that thing that you got to let out, and if it's yeah, I mean, in, you, you know, know. So, some some people, uh, you know, have Prozac and Xanax. I, I have a guitar. <laughs> you know, that's that's my thing. And uh, performing to me is, believe it or not, it's probably like the, the most stress-free part of my life. Because when you, I'm out in front of an audience doing what I do. It's like I don't really. You're so focused on it, doing it, you don't worry about outside stuff. You know, it's like my problems go away when you're on stage. So. Yeah. I, I love that. Yeah. yeah. In comparison to that, are there are there stressful moments when I was looking over? I mean, I see you've performed on Jimmy Kimmel and you've done National Star. You got to say the national the, anthem in the, Chicago. Are there the, any those kind of moments ever? The, those 15, 20 minutes before a gig when you have a guitar that won't work or a cable that just shorted out, or you know, you when you're running late and you have to set up and you have no time to set up. That kind of that's the only part of doing what I do that I don't like is, is setting up gear and. You know, if you're traveling with the sound system, it just seems like there's always something that can go wrong, and it always does go wrong. Yeah. And that that gets you know can be really stressful. And it, I used to be, man, I used to really just I freak out about stuff like that all the time. And now it's kind of like I've gotten to a point in my life where I just go, yeah, you know what? If we start late, they can wait for me. I'm not gonna. Doesn't make the it make, doesn't make the gig any better to, to get freaked out about when things don't work because that that almost always happens. So you just got to go. Okay, we'll we'll deal with it. And yeah. we'll play an extra fifteen minutes longer for you. Yeah, I'll do that right? too. Yeah. You know, but uh, it's happened before. You know, you something something goes wrong and you can't figure out how to get things working, and then you've got you know people waiting for you and a club owner breathing down your neck or you know going, why aren't you, you guys are supposed to start? And I'm like, you know, I'll, I won't take a break. You know, I'll play play longer. I'll take care of it. You know, and just it's just part of part of the job. You know, it happens. A lot of the road things you're playing with a band, then? Uh, uh, some, some of them. Stuff? In the last couple of years, I do a lot of stuff by myself. Uh, I have an awesome band. I love bringing them along. Uh, at the same time, it does make things, obviously, a lot simpler just to have it be just me. But mm -hmm. uh, I really have uh, just an awesome bunch of guys that, that travel with me when I do take the band out. And uh, we would make for great reality TV. Really <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, and that's, you know, the the whole chemistry of a band, too, can change things. Then you put traveling and some of the stresses of, yeah. you know, how come your, your drums didn't work last night? What's wrong? You know? Well, my guys, you know, we, we, we spent so many years of, uh, I think the core, my core band, we've been together for like six or seven years, and, and for a while, I think the first three or four years that we were together, we were playing over 200 shows a year. And when you don't spend any time away from people and you can still get along and still enjoy people's company, that says something about your relationship. And I think that the guys who, my, my band guys, you know, big part of the reason that they have been my band guys and still are my band guys is just because of the, the hang factor, you know, that we, uh, we like being around each other. That's great. Yeah, because if you didn't, it would make it a job then. Oh, you know what? <laughs> All it takes is one guy to have a bad attitude and it can ruin a whole trip, you know. And uh, fortunately for me, that I don't, uh, I've only been in that situation very rarely in my in my time doing this. So. Awesome. Yeah. I want to play another one of your recorded tunes great. that we have here before we get to it. Uh, get Your Cowboy On awesome. from uh, a couple of years back. Right, you want to tell us a little bit about this tune first? Uh, this is the song I had in the Super Bowl. Two, yeah. Uh, was it th two years ago, three years ago, I had this song. Crazy story. And in fact, they were in the Super Bowl again this the Super Bowl this year. Uh, three years ago, I was playing in Northern California, and uh, Seattle Seahawks cheerleader came to one of my gigs and came up and bought a CD for me, and I signed it for her after the show, and she took it back, and uh, worked up a cheer to this song with the Seattle Seahawks cheerleaders. Nice. And a couple weeks before the Super Bowl. The head of Westwood One Radio Entertainment was sitting in the stands at a Seattle, Seattle Seahawks game, heard the song when the cheerleaders were doing a cheer to it, and Googled, Googled who played it, called me up and said, would you be interested in having your song in the Super Bowl? <laughs> <laughs> Let me think about that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, the rest is history, so yeah. it's pretty cool. Very cool. And this is the song, folks. Sean Patrick McGraw, Get Your Cowboy On, from 2012, and from the big game. <laughs> 97.7 Country, WGLR.